Hey guys, Harry here, back again with another Bricklane vlog. I uh, finally got everything set up for the new phone, so I'm editing on my, uh, my new Poco X3 Pro uh, smartphone. It's a bit of a budget uh, smartphone, but it's a really good specs on for gaming, so I've been getting back into playing uh, a childhood favourite of mine uh, that has now finally come out on mobile. It's been out on mobile for a number of years, uh, but it's finally come out with the latest version of the game RuneScape. I used to play RuneScape massively when I was from ages like 10 to probably 20. Um, I met the missus when I was 23, because I'm 26 now, and uh, I probably played RuneScape like 10 years plus uh, pretty hardcore. I used to spend my life uh, a weekend on that. I used to go out to town getting hammered in my uh, in my late teens or uh, sit home all weekend playing RuneScape. That's what I used to do. I was sad. Uh, but I was a nerd. I am a nerd. I am a nerd. No, I'm a bit like nerd more than gaming but uh, yeah, I've been playing that on my on this Poco X3. It's got an 800 series Snapdragon chip. Uh, that's like a pretty good chip for a for a uh, mobile. Uh, but I've been playing that again. I've managed to recoup one of my old accounts from like 10 years ago. So I've been doing that. Uh, so I'm obviously hopeful my, my voice should sound a little bit better. It's a newer microphone, Android. You know, the better phones really. iPhone. It's overpriced. Whereas this Poco X3. I've been using it now for like two weeks, or oh, sorry, about a week and a half, and it's better than an iPhone in probably every way. And uh, it was one of them things. I was a, I've had iPhones for the last probably seven, seven or eight years. Now I got this, my first proper Android phone since I got since I had an HTC probably about ten years ago, and it is fantastic. I can't get enough of it. Um, this Poco X3 Pro. 250 quid it cost me. In, I got it in Phantom Black with um, 256 gig and 8 gigs of RAM. So, anyway, enough about this phone. What we're doing today in this video, so we are doing some table lifts. I did say last video I'd try to get some table lift footage and I managed to. I went very well on this day, uh, aka today. Uh, I was throwing up in the morning. I don't know what it was. I had like a bit, I got into a bit of a coughing fit, a fever, you know, what banged a hoodie on and just carried on. Uh, we didn't get to work till about nine o'clock, so I didn't start late until probably half nine, because um, we were dropping Archer off at uh, the old man's house, aka his granddad. So granddad had him today. Um, so uh, should I say he spent his day at his granddad's, it's my dad. Uh, so. That was, uh, we were late, I was late waking up, we didn't get up, we didn't wake up till like half seven, <laughs> quarter to eight, and then we got out of the house for about eight o'clock, dropped him at my dad's, then went to work, um, I was surviving on apple juice this morning, and then uh, the missus brought me some food up at snap time, I didn't even go for a snap, because I just wanted to get these cups finished, um, I'd had a lot of aggro this week, I'd had, you know, you know, I've, I've, I told some party walls I built under the gazebo because I got given the wrong cavity measurement on the drawing. It didn't show the party wall cavity; it only show show uh, only showed the external walls cavity, and I presume it was all the same. As had another couple of brick layers had all laid their cavity walls to that to that uh, party walls to that me me cavity measurement. So it turned out they changed. They've changed quite a lot this week on the on the job. They've changed specs for everything. The Specs for these cut-ups have changed as well. It's just been a complete ball ache. <coughs> the one thing these ties in at every 150. Uh, the designated lines, that's about 400 apart. It's a nightmare. I was doing it. I was doing them at four. I was doing it at 150, 300. Uh, I was doing it at fucking 450, uh, like standard ties. I was running out towards the end of this one anyway, so I just did what. Um, I just did what I had to to complete it, so I just put as, as many ties as it really needed. Um, so yeah, um, basically with these top outs, there's about 300 bricks in each, so I got about 600 bricks down today. Um, I think I left about that amount of money on it. I think I did. 600 bricks, so 
500 is 325, 600 is, yeah, about 400, yeah, so I was on the money really, I left, I was going to leave a bit more on than this, so I didn't have to really get these two table lifts done in the day, uh, but, you know, um, you know, I, 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 you know, it's easily, it's easily doable really, I worked half, half nine, well five today to get these done, I know it was like how sad working till five on a Friday, but, you know, I got it done, and everyone's getting a little, I'm getting just more synergy every week with the gang, it's the gang's first, you know, is the, you know, it's the second full week, shall I say, even though we only worked four days this week, and one of the days was a three quarter day, because we left early, um, you know, we go for snap normally between 11 and 12, and we went for snap at 12.30 uh, on one of the days, and then we didn't really do anything after snap, we just got the tools and went home. So even though it was really only half a day because we were having a late snap, I still class that as a three quarter day, you know, I do pay people through their snap, so, um, you know, everyone, everyone's had a good, everyone's had a good week this week, really. Um, Mrs. did three days, Dean did 3.37, 3 and 3 quarter, uh, obviously we all had Tuesday off, we all stayed in bed, and uh, yeah, I've, um, yeah, I was getting frustrated, I was talking, telling, talking to another Ricky the other day and I was just, you know, venting how my, how my frustration was for the day, because um, when I had to set that party wall down, which I got paid for, you know, but it was still... It still delays the build, it delays us getting on to his next drop by, you know, a few hours. And um, it's, you know, it just annoyed me because, you know, because the party walls, you know, once you set out a corner, you know, it's one less thing to fuck about with. But obviously now we've got, I'm going to I'm gonna do a profile setup, I think, for the party wall next. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and rewatch one of... Charlie Collison's old videos, I've watched all his profile setups, but it takes a few times to really get your head around how to build them effectively. Uh, and obviously you're, the situation you're working like, we're doing um, all our work with ReadyMix, so that makes a massive difference because ReadyMix don't go off, whereas silo gear does. So, you know, it's 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 one thing I'm, I'm going to look through. I'm going to look through small videos. I'm going to look through small videos and how to do these cut ups without building corners. As you can see here today, I'm building the corners, pick and dip, like you know, obviously as I always do. Um, but if I can find some uh, fascia and soffit line clamping techniques that doesn't require using the brick as a as a lever point, because these are so wet, it just pull a brick over. Um, I will do. I'm going to find something. I'm going to find some techniques that. You know, I can easily fix the lines of the spatial and soffit. There is a way you can do it with the Stanley knife that I've seen people do before, but oh, am I asked? Can I? Can I ask? You know, can I hell be asked to put fucking Stanley knife grooves in soffits and fascias? You know, I might try. It. I might try something. I'm gonna have a look at. Uh, I'm gonna have a look at some videos online. See what I can fashion up for the next one. Um, <clears throat> also, um, the new trowel, you know, how is, how's it going with brickwork? Really, work really good. You know, perfect for long bed as well, really good for long bed. You know, the biggest advantage I find with it, even though we're not really going to have to worry about this anymore, is getting your gobble off back of damp trays and stuff, you know, especially on these radon barriers that, that we were having to use. Now they've definitely converted. Uh, we've, I've seen all the ground workers ripping the insulation out, all of the drop zone and all the visqueen cutting all that off so we're definitely now back to drop zone traditional just two four inch damps one at one at damp level one at 150 ir with a, just a little tray of uh, the air bricks just a bit like you know uh the a bit like the charlie collison set up set up at uh Molden, I think it was the I don't have a clue what these names of these sites are but the one where he was doing the boxes with the uh, with his gang uh, before that ran out of bricks so yeah just like that you know the, the it's the same setup with the party walls don't have any any insulation in either it's all hollow cavities um, but I, the, I don't know that I never I watched it, a few of his videos back then but I never saw him ever doing any sort of um, 
obviously because they didn't have a tray like we did, uh, they don't have to do any cavity sort of maintenance. You're just sort of brushing your cavity, making sure it's clean. There's no messing out with those bottom radon trays. It's just going to make life so much better. It's going to save us days out of the whole of builds. You know, the whole out of all lifts of on each lift of a house, it's going to save you like a day probably in messing about. Um, I, you know, it's making me a little bit more. A little bit more positive about this site now, even with some of the stuff that I've been told. Um, but yeah, so I'm continuing with the big corners. And uh, obviously, try not to do any on these cut ups now when it comes to the gable ladder. I just try not to be doing any angled cuts, you know. Really, you should be doing it on table lifts, but now with these bricks and how how they wall, I just use little three quarter pieces and gobbet a nicely flushed mortar joint because the face is soft you don't you'll not see it anyway uh, as you can see here up to the gable ladder I put just a little you know quarter piece and then just gobble at the back of it you know it's not the neatest way to do it you should really do like a angled cut but these bricks cut like shit and the price of these cut ups is basically just measure uh, you, there's nothing for them you don't get paid anything for banging them ties in so I ain't fucking about, I'm just going to blast them in uh, any old owl. Uh, pick and dip till my heart's content, you know. I do love laying bricks pick and dip. I ain't done a pick and dip in depth video. Um, <clears throat> but as you can see here, you know, f you know, especially with the small trowel, it makes all the difference. Look, you can see I'm spreading for at least a brick and after two bricks with this nine inch trowel. Uh, that's one thing people do you know say about the small trials oh you can't spread for as many bricks as bullshit you know you can spread you know from the amount of time it's took you to lift that heavy 11 12 inch trowel and spread for two bricks or three bricks because i don't care who you are you're not spreading for more than two or three bricks on a, a standard uh spread without you doing multiple motions you know like sort of tapping bits of bits of bed off of each you know with your trowel um, you know, two or three bricks is what you're going to spread with most trowels if you're doing a big enough spread for the pick and dip. But with these nine inch trowels, you can easily spread one and a half, two bricks. You're not losing much and you can move your trowel a hell of a lot faster than you can 11 or a 12. Um, I know that Izzy uses a 12 inch spade on his privates. Um, oh, that came out really wrong. But in, on all these private jobs, I see him using the 12 inch. Um, and uh, you know it is it is one of them things you know if you are if you know I suppose if you're used to using a big trowel and you're doing a lot of block work or you you're not having to get through the same amount of volumes as you are on site because I know he works a lot of time solo on these private private jobs you know it can be beneficial having a big trowel I suppose you know you're doing if you're only putting so many gauges of muck in or muck gobbo and um, you're wanting to you know move as much gear as you can probably a big trial makes sense but for on site when you've got hoddies on you know getting your gear to hand and you just go you know you're just turning out you know brick after brick um and and you've got to really hone your pick and dip as well i know a lot of guys don't do it i know i don't think i, I think i think changi does it charlie collison and probably tricky are the main guys I see doing pick and dip, you know. And there you go. There are a lot of those guys don't even do it exclusively. It's probably the Kurt, probably Kurt Mall pass. But he's even he's like lightning traditional anyway. So there's not many guys who do it exclusively. Uh, but if you dedicate yourself to pick and dip exclusively, it does take some time. Um, you can lay bricks faster with a nine inch trowel than you can any other size. I was experimenting with even 11 inch trials of pick and dip and this nine has blown everything out of the water for speed you can move your hands quicker you can you know the repetitive motion of laying a bed out you can do that quicker and i've and i have a lot more control over the mortar you know you can feel the consistency better with a small trowel whereas a big trowel you know you have to have the muck dead on perfect to get a good um you know good laying speed with it as you can see i was flying uh, today i was really trying to blast them in i wasn't being as probably finicky and as neat as i normally am um and you can just see the how fast i can move the trowel here i'm doing a little chip brick clip brick technique you see on the spec mix 
it's one little thing they use to try and keep a uniform perps without even if you've traveled you know clip brick technique works great on gables or boundary walls i used to use it all the time um and obviously you can see me extensively using the six foot level the six foot level is underutilized you know it's one thing it's priceless to have you just get such a good reading and especially on these um these big rack backs i'm doing um you're not you don't have to be perfect that bubble just make sure all your bricks are touching if it's a, you know and over a big span as well it's easier to stay level i don't know if it's just me laying them um if i'm used to laying freehand but i never seem to have much problem with my bricks being at level when i'm laying freehand um I, you know for all the stick you know people get like um the debate that, that dean and charlie had about the corner building versus profiles you know if you can lay bricks fast to a line like you know you know in if you're laying over a thousand bricks a day regularly uh, without trying you know you can lay freehand the same you, you know I, I i truly believe that if you can lay it fast and accurate to a line you can simulate that freehand and it's it's about it's muscle memory a lot of the time as well people don't want to people going about oh yeah this this technique that technique but a lot of the time it's, it's it's muscle memory that if you're accurately one scraping a brick for instance to the line you can accurately you know one scrape a brick freehand to that invisible line that you're trying to eye in with your eye in with your uh, uh, with your eye and a lot of the time by keeping an eye on your bed joints so if you're one thing an old bricklayer taught me years ago consistent 10 mil joints and this is one thing this is one reason i never gauge cut ups i just consistent 10 mil joint all the way up and luckily these concrete bricks are pretty much gauged to to the millimeter but because they're a more processly made brick and um, they don't tend to vary in size very much they can do but it's very rare um and you know, I, I don't have, have I don't I don't have any issues with gables getting out of level. Um, just by keeping down that consistent 10 mil joint, you can't do this with all bricks. You you can only do it really with a brick you know that comes to gauge a lot of the time that is very uniform, which is an upside of these concretes. I've I can lay quick because of that factor, but then I get slowed down again because of these because of the soapy factor of the bricks. Um, they have pros and they have cons and I'm I am getting better and I'm getting quicker like I did 600 bricks today more or less free and both of the time um, and you know cramp conditions two board scaffolds one board scaffold in this case um, and I do a bit of I, th I think I mentioned this earlier a bit of ambidextrous brick lane I can pick and dip both um, ambidextrous and you know left-handed which I am and right-handed which I'm not so right handed right hand is my off hand that's what i uh, uh that's not my laying hand but i can lay bricks pick and dip right handed i can't lay a brick traditional right handed because i just haven't got the um i can't really spread right handed very well but i can i can lay i can press the brick to the wall and lay it pretty straight right handed so i'll show you that later on in the video uh, i'll highlight that when i come to it um also as well you know doing the pick and dip freehand very very good um to do you've just got to get you know time under your belt pick and dipping you know it is it is one thing you'll only really benefit from the small trowel as well if you are an aficionado at pick and dip it just takes a lot of time doing it just do it f just basically make yourself do it consistently and exclusively um it's some, one thing people don't want to you know people don't want to admit this technique is it's because it does take time to master like the traditional method like you know i'm i'm faster i'm faster pick and dip um in most situations than i am traditional but on the right on the right type of brick or the right type of work i can be just as fast traditional but it just takes it takes the it takes the right circumstance uh like if i'm nose bleeding traditional probably all the way whereas if i'm at knee height slash waist high or higher and uh, well sort of between knee and waist or higher i'm faster pick and dip all day and you know it does depend on the brick which these concretes uh becoming more and more pick and dip you know suitable i find in sort of every six situ every situation depend you know you know considering well you know relying on the mortar being right and as long as that is consistently pretty decent 
you know, a long bed pick and dip is probably one of your best bets, uh, for, you know, for my money uh, on the concretes. I know every concrete rig's a bit different. I won't recommend it on all, but it's just got to get, you've just got to experiment. And I'm finding now that it doesn't really make much sense laying these traditionally if you don't have to. There's sometimes I won't lay pick and dip, I'll lay traditional if I'm feeling like it, especially if. If Dean's spreading, I'd do more traditional, to be honest, because um, it's easier. But then again, if you get into a good rhythm pick and dip, you know, you have everyone has the good days and bad days laying, and I'm the same. But if you're on a good rhythm doing pick and dip, it's far superior in speed. And the quality is just as good. People bag on the jointing all day long, but if you've got hoddies jointing up for you, that ain't an issue. And um, the more you do it, the more consistently you'll get full joints. It is just uh, it is a technique thing. It is... Uh, an experience thing as well, so I'm just having a Bud Light while one of my cats pesters me, buddy, my black boggy. Um, you know, uh, it is one thing I'd, I'd encourage anyone to try. You know, get used to doing it. It makes your verse, your laying speed so much more versatile. Like here, you know, I'm just two scraping freehand on the pick and dip here, and that's took year you know eight nine ten months of getting confident doing it you know getting confident doing it and you can see the increase in corner building speed dramatically uh, you know drastically should i say not dramatically that's not a word but um you know another thing i recommend as well on these table lists this is like a one and one specific thing or you could a one and two specific thing if you've got someone who like for instance today we had Mel up on the scaffold with me on the other table lift stacking my bricks uh, spec mix style st stood straight up straight up like you see you know Charlie and his his gang using on the table you know on the scaffold boards a bit like that technique um, and then Dean was lifting bricks up the ladder and then Mel was loading them back out when they got low and then she was passing me bricks when I was bending uh, and that all sped up the table lift really well you know but you have to be hands on you have to you have to get people in the in the rhythm with it all. Whereas, you know, I'm I'm one of these people naturally where I don't like to pester people for things. I just don't. I, I'm a bad boss in a sense. I'm 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 not efficient with my time managing. You know, my labourers and hoodies. I'm getting better at it slowly. You know, I'm a first time mate. I'm soft as fuck. I, you know, I'm I'll just stand and chat to someone until they have them doing something productive for me. Or have them loading out. I just like to chat to people. You know, I'm not. I am not always got a business head. You know, I haven't got like a efficiency head all the time. You know, sometimes I just like to have a laugh. But I've been trying to u utilize Dean and Mel. Um, you know, more efficiently and get them doing more. Uh, in a sense of more to help me. And it's sometimes it ain't always fun having someone. You know, going oh ne next break, next break, next break. You know, it's a bit full on, but. Especially in these times where we're a bit, you know, as back as it was against the wall on this one, I need, I knew I left enough money on for all of us on this day, and left a bit more on actually. I left a bit more. I made sure that if I got this done in a day, I'd have a good week. If I didn't get it done, it'd fuck next week up. Uh, so I was, I said to, to everyone, you know, I'm gonna stay until this is done. Everyone's just gotta help me get this quick done as quick as as quick as possible. So I had everyone fire sock in. Uh, everyone fire socked as I went, you know, as I was building, which I didn't do before. I was a bit disorganized. Um, like this, like that's one thing I, everyone's getting a bit better at is thinking for themselves. I don't have to tell people as much. Um, there is still things that do that I do have to tell people, you know, like we're loading out and stuff. I still have to go and check, you know, ask people, ask how do I load this out? Where do you want me to put these? And everything's synergizing a bit better over each week. And you know I'm making at least day work um, money, so that's like 200 a day or more within anywhere from like 200 to 220 a day. You know if I'm making that, I class that as a good price work wage, even though people call it a day worker's wage. And you know if you call yourself a day worker, you know most people I consider day workers aren't even worth 220. So um, you know I think it's something that's been spread around by. The Brit Lane world is in like, you know, I think, I know Charlie Collison was the first person I heard to call someone a day worker, but, you know, I, I suppose it is these guys who just go from job to job doing bare minimum, getting a, a set wage a day and, you know, blagging it, but 
I think two two hundred pound plus a day for any price worker for any bricklayer in general is a really good wa wage, even for a price worker. And I know there's people who want to earn mega money on price, but sometimes it ain't always possible. You have to be on the right work, the right gang, the right conditions, and you know, a thousand pound a week is is good by any standards, whether it's private work or or site work. The difference you've got to really think uh, what I sort of have. Uh, well, I, I recommend to people as a benefit over doing private work or, you know, and price work in general on sites is it's just a bit more stress free. You just have, you know, you just have to turn up and build the work, you know, build the, you know, build the work, you know, basically work, start building. Uh, whereas, you know, when you're working in doing private work uh, or domestic, as people call it, I think, don't know, the, anyway, domestic or whatever. You know, you have to get your own tools, all your own gear, mix it all, get your own materials. You've got to, you know, negotiate with customers, deal with, you know, people on the street when you're working, etc. And it's just a lot more hassle than working on a site, in my opinion. You know, it's not, but and I find if you can lay quick on site, you can lay quick anywhere. And it's basically you know you make yourself open to more types of work if you can work on price on site you know people call site bricklayers rough but I don't care who you are it's only it's up to you how neat you make your work and the neat you can make it and more consistent you can the more consistent you can be at being neat and then increase your speed from there uh, you well on site you know you can then go off and make a name for yourself doing private jobs if you want to you know do so go around tendering for work but something I'm not interested in I've got family I've got you know work isn't number one to me really I know I've got a YouTube channel where I talk about Brick Lane but that's only because I'm passionate about con creating content um, if it wasn't Brick Lane I've tried a few times making uh, gaming videos I had a YouTube channel called Harry Regan that's my full name and it was called Regan's Realm actually the URL and I made videos on action RPGs I didn't really go anywhere, I had like 100 subscribers and I wasn't very good at games because I didn't spend enough time on them. Whereas Brick Lane, I spend 50, 40 hours, 50 hours a week in Brick Lane, you know, 10 hours a day. That's five days a week, 10 hours. I'm working eight of those and I'm fucking preparing to work uh, for two of those every day, every uh, weekday. And sometimes I work Saturday, I was going to work... Um, this Saturday, which is tomorrow, me and the missus were going to go in and smash up the front. We're going to smash the front of the house uh, of that pairing because we've all, you know, every, it's all loaded and we're just going to. We had a tub there waiting actually. Um, we're just going to go and build that and just back it up with a, a couple of course of block and prop it all. But, you know, she, she you know, I she asked me, you know, what have you earned this week? And I, said, I told her and then she said you know what have I got in this week how many days have I done and I was like you've done three days and I was like and she's like well that's enough for me you're having the day off so we're going to Ikea instead uh, but we were going to work Saturday um, we could even work Sunday if you wanted because the site um, I've unlocked the Iris fence on one section to where I can access the bolts from the outside and it's right near our plot so I can go, if, with the ready mix lasts at least a day or two, I can go either work Saturday or Sunday if I want, which, you know, it's one of them, I like the, the, the fact that this site is so, you've got freedom to do what you want in a sense with ready mix, whereas Silo, you know, you can't just go and work on a Saturday and Sunday because you haven't got any gear there ready, whereas with ready mix it's just sat there waiting for you to use it, and a lot of the time it has at least a 48 hour retarder on it, so like, the really really wet stuff today will be perfect on Saturday a little bit stiff on Sunday um, but if it's had some wet weather over those over those days it'll still be good uh, even to use on the Monday so it's definitely as a bonus and this is why I'm ready mix on sites that have ready mix on you know it's very good it's very you have a lot of freedom to do what you want to work when you want to work you know uh, here's a little bit of ambidextrous right hand lane as you can see Dean's passing me the bricks in the, into my hand, like I said, um, I was doing. And I'm laying this right-handed, you can see I'm a bit slower, a little bit more clumsy. But, uh, it just took a little bit more tapping with the level, you know. I think most guys on site can't lay this accurate to a line, let alone freehand, so. Um, 
you know, most people who lay freehand, they have to smash the level all over. Normally, I just do one tap and it's right. Uh, with this, with this, I had to do probably two or three taps, but, you know, it was pretty much dead on, even with the opposite hand. So that's that just shows the application of pick and dip. I never lay bricks, you know, with my other hand, but pick and dip, it feels so natural. And it's so easy to, you know, once you've learned it one way, your mind can see it your way through. Once you get a proficient on one side of your body, you can sort of convert your mind to just mimic that ability, but just for the other hand. So that's one thing I was working at. Uh, so as you can see in this video, you know, I've gone from building one corner back to the other uh, without much without much hassle there. So you can see the speed of built, you know, I'm building these corners. You know, it took me 20 minutes, 25 minutes to build that first one, and now I'm back building this one, and that's only took me. I think I get both corners up in this. It's only a 45 minute video, so you can see the, the you know, you can build corners quite quick. Uh, I still can't, you know, I'm still not up to the speed of Dean with his when he's with his 22 course corner in 28 minutes, you know. But you know, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, Sam. I'm getting there, Sam, as he likes to say to everyone, Sam. All that, you know, down south. Down south. But, uh, yeah. Oh, it's proper funny. We've got a, we've got a southern uh, a site assistant on, on here, and I've nicknamed him Coinson's Mate because it's the only southerner I know by name now. So, he is now known, the site assistant on here is now Coinson's Mate because it sounds like he's from that way on. Uh, but, yeah. And then... Uh, uh, yeah, so, oh, I can't get into what nicknames we have for, for everyone on site, it's, you know, it's a bit, you know, that's the only one that's not, you know, vulgar. Anyway, uh, but that, we've had, I've got to say as well, over the last few weeks, um, of the Dean and the missus have been working, the banter has been the best it's been in years, you know, probably ever since me and my best mate Gaz, one of my best mates Gaz, uh, we worked together back in 2017, 2016, so, you know, I've not had this much of a laugh ever since then. And um, that's one thing you can't be having good banter on site, you know. Even with the missus, you know, she can take a, you know, take a joke. Here we go back, a bit of right hand laying here. Ready? I think I get a bit better on this one. I think I'm a bit more fluent. Here we go. Look, I'm, I'm doing the spec mix style. I'm not even chucking the, chucking my scrape off onto the, onto the board yet because I, I can't really do it very well. Look at that. That's proper amateur. All on way. Another one. Still faster than most free on there. All on. Oh, and a few a few extra straight scrapes there. Uh, so another look here. Oh, look at that! It's now falling off onto the floor. But oh, there we go. And then I think I have to get my cup here. Oh yeah, I said to Dean at this point. I was talking to him. I was saying right, you know, because he, he says, "Can you do you always lay right hand?" And it's like, yeah, this is probably my second time ever doing it. But um, I basically said, you know, you just got to check your level more often as you as he does trying to when he starts laying bricks he'll be having to level it every two bricks whereas when you get more experience you can you know you can you can see you know you can visualize where your bricks are meant to go you can you know just see what it's meant to look like and we go back again with the right hand here the main thing i like to say to people is even with me laying with my right hand fingertips look at my fingertips on the brick control over the brick there as you can see fingertips that's one thing you see apprentices doing they grab the brick a bit too vigorous here you can see fingertips even with the off hand i'm laying off handed here so here back to my normal hand here left handed and then i go back to you know sort of backside laying uh like this it's probably a bit easier to lay this way uh, than try to it's probably easier for me to spin around and just lay properly but i wanted for that few, first few course that is how you can avoid nose bleeding like i was uh, beginning of the video just spin your spin to your off hand so I know it takes a bit more practice and it's something you'll only get over probably 10 years plus laying and even guys then if you haven't got sort of um, if you haven't got like a natural aptitude to doing it you'll probably still not be able to lay on with your off hand I, remember, I think my mate one of my mates Bob uh, who works with one of my other mates Sai he I think he can lay bricks ambidextrous. I'm sure I've seen him lay. Um, I've sort of seen him lay with his other hand, and he's still as fast, still faster than most people with his other hand as well. So that's one thing. You know, he's got some natural talent for it, um, and uh, you know, that's just an example. You know, it is the it is the exception that proves the rule when it comes to talented 
uh, bricklayers and people have natural talent for it. I think that's what Dean was trying to get at, uh, Dean, the traditional bricklayer. San, Dean, um, he, uh, he was trying to get at with his corner building, you know, if you're naturally talented with your skill and your art and your mastery, you know, you can be faster. You know, freehand, you can lay a, you know, can lay six course without putting the level on it. And I've seen bricklayers do it. This bricklayer in, in question I've seen do it, it was rough as fuck. But, you know, it is, it is, you know, it can be done, you know, it can be done, it's an art, you know, it's not what the level says, it's how it looks, you know, I've heard that saying and one too many times, but it is one of them things that, that you have got to understand, even if you're an apprentice watching this, that as you get older, you know, and as you get more experience under your belt, and if you keep enthusiastic and you keep your, you know, mastery, uh, you know, I've really, and if you keep at it, chasing your mastery, you know, you'll can get can get to a level where you can literally build anything and toss five, six, seven hundred bricks down in a day, no matter what you're building, uh, just by using efficiency and proficiency with your trowel, you know. So there's so many different ways, you know, it is. Is one thing that does keep me keep it fresh for me, Brit Lane, is that every day I'm learning something a little bit different. I'm increasing my level. I'm leveling up every single day with trial skill, uh, and that's just been one little area. And there's been one thing I'll change. Like for instance, on these cut ups, um, I've never felt more confident in freehand as I have in today's video. Um, but you know. It's one thing that's took probably 10 years to get to this point, you know, with corner building and I've built so many corners with uh, on the boundary walls, garages, but I never laid like this, I never laid corners to this speed, whereas that's what you've got to do, you've got to lay it slow first, and you've got to lay it slow a lot of times and then over time you'll get a little bit faster, a little bit faster and the end result will be just as good, just as accurate. And you see here a bit of front tip action as well and that is one thing that comes with time uh, as you can see as well I'm not one for just one scraping it all the time I do do a bit of excessive swipes you know I hope I don't wear this rose down too quick uh, but you know brick lane as well sometimes this is one thing that I think people uh, have criticized me and other brick layers for is excessive movement wasted movement and sometimes um, especially on the the concretes, you need that tactile feedback on your flush joint because you can easily start rocking and rolling with the punches on these bricks uh, in and out in them. Um, so it's not as effect, you know. It is sometimes isn't effective on all bricks to you know do multiple swipes, but for this type of brick in particular, I find a, a more rhythmic, you know, like a more rhythmic flow to lane. Uh, you know, get doing a few swipes, cutting a few. Uh, bed joints, you know, a few, just, it's just finding that range, ranging your face with your trowel, find it a little bit easier, whereas some guys you see have a more robotic, mechanic look to their style, you know, it's everyone has like a, has a different style, but you've got to find what works for you and can produce a more consistent quality build every time while increasing speed. Um, you know, it is one of them things you pick up over time, it, Everyone will have a different style. Some people lay bricks more, you know, robotic, more sort of stiff. They have a stiff laying style, whereas I find it more beneficial to be more fluid uh, with your style, you know. So it is, it, is, it is nuances that you'll only pick up after, you know, five or six years of laying bricks. You'll, you'll, you'll alter in style multiple times, but it's something you'll normally, um, that you'll normally pick up over years you know and this is what bugs people getting into the trade and when these people say how long does it take to become a bricklayer and you know I say 10 years and they say well well we, I've, you know I've seen so and so can lay bricks to a line after six months and it's like yeah you can but you're not really realizing you're not really getting your head down the job you know I think until you're at least five or six years in uh, I think you need to always be supervised until that time and then you can sort of think about you know attempting work on your own but you'll probably make tons of fuck ups like I have um, 
but you know that's the only way you learn really making mistakes so you've got to learn from your mistakes and also you know have that trial time under your belt and and a lot of it comes from getting thrown in at the deep end you know doing building shit stuff you're not very good at you know like for for, for years i've got sent to do loads of cut-ups you know uh, when i first started at the whole firm i used to work at i got sent to do everyone's top out i got sent to do all the fucking garage top outs all the fucking wall tops all the the boundary walls that had like pillars every 10 bricks that you could make no money on and it's like through shit work and shit drops i became better and i think that's one thing you've got to sort of persevere as as like a fresh you know journeyman bricklayer you know after with like a couple of years experience at your time or a, or even just out of your time as an apprentice after two or three years it's it is one thing you've got to sort of throw your sin at sending itself in at the deep end and you can't really expect to be earning much more than six or seven hundred pound a week uh in your within your first year or two of being on price it, you're just not going to make it um a lot of the time and it depends on the gang you're in you know obviously i've earned some really good money working solo and one on one and now i'm sort of i ain't got the energy to work i ain't got the energy to work as solo anymore i I just i'm not prepared to do it it's too much fucking hard work and like i'd rather have two people wiping my backside than have to do that anymore i'd rather take a slight pay cut and have an easy day at work you know whereas working solo like just ask anyone who has to work solo it's some graft and you're not actually getting faster at laying you're not actually increasing your your brick laying skill I, I find if you're not at least got a good hod carrier feeding you consistently and keeping up to your speed you're not really improving uh, you're not improving at, at yourself you're not improving at laying because I think you need that constant you need that constant feed of material as a bricklayer to excel and you know to really get fast as you can see I'm going health leather on this one I don't know what I'm doing front tip American so I'm gonna have to cut myself off right there I've just realized we're running out of footage so um, thank you very much for watching everyone hope you enjoyed my the topics of today you know this I'm just gonna have to watch watch through this again and try and label some of the topics I covered but I hope every th- help the um, help some of my uh, you know my opinions and some of the tips I've shared in this video have helped anyone with uh, table lifts and cut ups in general. And uh, I've got probably another video, maybe doing a bit of running in to the line, so I'll uh, upload another uh, video probably tomorrow or the day after. Uh, now I've easily got access to all my clips. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and. Hit the like button, spread the videos around on the YouTube algorithms, and I hope everyone has a good weekend. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a bit of tricky, bricky outro in there.